Hey guys, what's up? So this is a podcast. We're going to be talking about why uh, I guess 50% of macroeconomic theory is dedicated to economic growth. Uh, as someone who's been, uh, I guess, studying uh, these topics for a very long time, I always wondered uh, why do we focus so much on growth? Uh, why not on inequality, which seems to be one of the more uh, policy-based applications, right, which is discussed more in government, less so about growth, at least here in uh, the first world. So this is uh, such an important topic, it seems like it, is that it's even taught on the undergraduate level. And what that means is that there's been some assessment made that this is relevant for people who don't have uh, intention on pursuing further uh, graduate education, because this is a core part of your curriculum that you're going doing. This seems like something that everyone should know, even if they don't plan on pursuing higher graduate education. So during your intermediate macroeconomics education, you are gonna learn about the solo model. You're gonna see topics relating to economics growth. And the main takeaway uh, from the solo model, right, is that technological innovation goes and drives economic growth. However, uh, a side point is uh, really not so uh, talked about so much because I don't think it's the focus over here, but if you're going and you're driving uh, your wages and uh, your uh, rental rate of capital and how that relates to their marginal products, you go and you see that technological innovation plays a huge role in that. That's a main driver of growth. And once we go and we augment this model with uh, technological growth, right, that's going to go and be a driver of growth in wages. So that's something to be cognizant of. So that's uh, a really and you know an informal academic overview of what this model is about. So what's that useful for? It's useful for saying that productivity is directly related to improvements in well-being as propagated through wages. As in one of the many equations that you're gonna go and derive is relating your marginal product of labor to wages, meaning actual production is related to wages. And one of those things that uh, are, is related to wage prices is technology and the level of technology and your levels of capital that are available. So it binds together the availability of resources and the time that you put into it, plus uh, this idea of technological innovation, how that goes and improves people's lives. That's a pretty important thing. In terms of that relevance to uh, business people, entrepreneurs, uh, business analysts, and data analysts, this gives us a lot of important information. It tells us that we should be cognizant of where we stand in the greater economy and how exactly is our business being supported? Is it being supported in an autonomous way? Are we taking advantage exclusively of the resources that are around us? Are we innovating? Or uh, conversely, are we just you know hanging on for the good ride? As in, are we just taking advantage of you know the upturns and upticks that are happening uh, in the economy? What this model does from the perspective of the business analyst or someone that is you know, seemingly not important from the perspective of the firm is that it shows that the well-being of your firm or your industry is dependent on where exactly you're putting your pieces, where exactly you fit in the rest of the economy and where exactly uh, innovation comes into the picture. So, uh, I hope that this video uh, was useful. I hope it was, you know, a little bit of insightful. If it wasn't, you know, let me know in the comments below uh, for where I'm wrong. Take care.